So I don't have any notes on me, so we're just going to try and wing it like I do on my YouTube channel. Hello, everyone. My name is Patricia Bright. It is a pleasure to be here in Peckham, SE5. And I, I don't know if it's SE5, actually, to be honest with you. I am also a South London girl, but I say that I'm from the better side of South London. Brixton, Streatham, Croydon. Now... I'm pretending like that actually matters because growing up, I didn't really feel like I could ever claim ends or anything like that. It was very important when I was younger to be able to say you're from a certain place because everyone always wants to fit into something. And I never feel, felt like I fitted in any way. And I wanted to talk about today why not fitting in might be the reason as to why you stand out. So I am of African origin. I am a proud Nigerian. But in all honesty, growing up, that wasn't the reality. It's very, very cool nowadays. Like, I'll be honest, we're on top <laughs> at the moment. But, you know, when I was growing up, I was embarrassed of my surname. The teacher would say, Utegu, and I'd be like, no, that's wrong. And I tried to, like, you know, hide it a little bit. We're not undercover anymore, but before, it was incognito. I developed my love of um, Patwa, Bashman. I was an honorary Jamaican slash Jafakan. And um, I spent a lot of time just, you know, being undercover. And not only was I culturally undercover, but I was undercover from the things that I found interesting. Now, I didn't go out. There was no sleepovers for me. My mum was strict. And so there was barely any TV. I liked history. I was a big fan of the Tudors. I uh, don't know who's a fan of the Tudors, but that was a thing I was into. I also liked Harry Potter, and I liked walks in the park, and very random things that no one else was interested in. And I quickly learned that I was very uncool, very uncool, but I wanted to hide that. So I spent a lot of time trying to be like everyone else, trying to fit in. And I think all of us at some point in time feel like we want to fit in. Sometimes we hide the things that we're interested in, the things that we're passionate about, the little awkward things that we have, be that at school or university or the workplace. We kind of hide that part of us because it's just not a good look. So today, you know, as mentioned, my numbers are out there. I have a lot of followers um, in the social media space. I've got two million plus followers on like YouTube and on all these other platforms. And I have been privileged enough to work with the likes of Diet Coke, been a L'Oreal ambassador, I've consulted at Google, I've worked with Dior, it's actually crazy. And this all comes from the fact that I created something when I felt like I didn't fit in. So, you know, You've got secondary school, you've got college, and then I, it was time for university. And I really wanted to have that butterfly moment. I don't know how many of you guys went to university out here, but I'm sure that people knew that one person who they changed their name, you know, they changed their vibe, they changed their clothing, they wanted to be someone completely different. I had a friend whose name was Emeka, but he went to university and his name became Akin. He completely changed his name. It was a new thing. And I wanted to be that person as well. I wanted to change how I was perceived. It's like, yes, new me you know, new, new school, new city, left London, went to Manchester, didn't know anyone. And I thought that being in a new environment was gonna, you know, change the game for me. I think it took about three days before I realized, oh, I'm just as awkward as I was before. And I really, really struggled. I called my mum and I was like, mum, I can't do this. I was crying. I remember literally in the first few days, that no one spoke to me. And that wasn't, maybe it was them, I don't know, but you know, no one spoke to me. And I think it was a case of that, I wasn't someone who was good at like coming up to people and just being like, hey, I'm Patricia, I'll be my friend. I wasn't good at that. And like, maybe I was better if people had approached me, but no one did. Maybe because I felt like I was a bit different. Called my mom and I got a reality check real quick. You know, university fees are paid, so you're staying at university. <laughs> and you have to be a graduate. So, you know, I was on that journey. And so I carried on at university. Eventually, you know, found people that I connected with and started to grow and have relationships and friendships and that kind of thing. And I also found YouTube. Now... 
I also had a period of time where I had like falling out with friends as well, which again happens where I was like kind of left to a position where I didn't have anyone. And YouTube actually came to me at a time, like it came to me like a vision where I was then able to find this platform of misfits and people who are into really different things. And the things that I was into, particularly hair and makeup in a very extreme and intense um, perspective was most people weren't into it in the way I was into it. But I found people on forums. Can you imagine there were forums of people tracking their hair growth journey, like taking pictures of themselves, like my hair's grown an inch this month. Here's a picture of my inch of growth. And there'll be people like me, like, go girl, you're doing amazing. <laughs> but, but, you know, I didn't want to tell people that that is what I was into. So I found this secret world of YouTube. And so Life kept going, I was doing my YouTube on the side, I had created content and I, I hadn't really told anyone that I was doing it because it was something that I was, I wouldn't say embarrassed about, but it was just my little thing. So it was time to graduate from university and go into the world of work and career. I didn't know what I was gonna do. I had actually, I had actually um, changed course I'll move a bit. <laughs> I had actually changed um, the course that I was on. So I had studied international fashion marketing and I moved into accounting. My mum was very, very happy with that because, you know, the world of fashion was a little bit unsure and accounting was more like the lawyer that she wanted me to be. And so um, I'd moved course and I, I knew that I was going to get the grades that I needed to to get, so I knew I was gonna graduate well, but I didn't know what I was gonna do. And I had a friend who was really, really smart. He had secured himself a job at a top investment bank. He had a salary, he had a guaranteed job, he had a bonus, everything. And he was like to me, Patricia, I think you should apply for this job. I was like, why would I apply for this job? I'm not qualified. Because he was like, he was at Manchester University and I was at Man Met, you know, the school that wasn't as good as Manchester, but no one knew that. And um, he was like doing um, computer science. He had all A stars. He was just a genius. And he told me to apply for this job because he believed I, I would get it. And there's a statistic that, or a, um, some research that shows that men are more likely to apply for a job even if they're underqualified. Whereas women are only gonna apply when they are qualified or overqualified. And I actually applied for that job and I actually failed one of the entrance exams. It was a, um, um, a, an arithmetic test that I just, that was just not any good at, failed that, but I still got the job. And I found that to be absolutely crazy. And I was like, how did I get this job? And I think it was an example to me that even sometimes when you feel like you might not be good enough or you can't apply for something, that you might as well try because the, only, the worst thing that can happen is you don't get the role and you move on. But I actually applied and got this job. Now there were 8,000 people who applied to get on this internship. I was one of those 8,000 people who got it. And there were only 300 people who got in. I looked very different to everyone there, clearly. So of the 300, 400 people there, there were probably two women of color and two men of color and everybody else looked very different to me. And there was probably about five to six girls just in general. So the, the numbers and the ratios are different. Again, I was in a position where I felt like I didn't fit in, but I wanted to do everything I possibly could to fit in get the job, secure the bag. I wanted this internship. My salary then, or it was going to be a salary of like 35,000 pounds a year, 5K bonus. And I was 20 years old at the time. I, was make, I would have been making more than my mum at that point in time. And my mum and dad put together in all honesty. And so I was like, right, let's, let's do this. Let's be like everyone else. So I was on that grind. I was reading that Financial Times, you know, in the morning, trying to practice my coding in the evening and learn everything I could about technology and th this world of finance, because I didn't know anything. I wasn't a technologist. And I was still doing my YouTube on the side because it was something that I found really fun. It was my weekend thing and I, I, I had wanted to keep doing it. And then my internship class found out about what I did. And I was the absolute laughing stock. At this point in time, I had been trying to keep my head down and show everyone that I was just like them. Even though I looked different, even though I spoke differently, even though I didn't have the A stars like everyone else, I didn't have enough UCAS points to even apply for that job. 
I wanted them to think I was like them. But this YouTube thing that I was doing made me look very unprofessional. I got people emailing me from my class, like friends saying, Patricia, you've got to stop this now. You're not going to get the job if people find out that you're doing this. This is not a good look. I was so embarrassed because it kind of got spread around the class. Like everyone was playing the videos on their laptops and just sending me all these messages. So I deleted everything. I put everything on private. I tried to get my head down and act like it wasn't a thing that I was doing. And so I got the job. I was working in the city, I've made it, right? I could wear my, my suit, my tie, everything. I was working in Canary Wharf and St. Paul's and doing the city thing and trying to just keep going like everybody else was going. And again, my whole life, I had this vibe of just wanting to fit in and do what everyone else was doing. And I was finally doing that. But for some reason, I really wanted to go back to the YouTube thing that I was doing. It was something that I had, had found so much solace in and enjoyed so much. And so I decided to start it up again. I worked in the city for the next four or so years and actually built up my career. I was doing really well, but I was doing this YouTube thing on the side. Now, eventually, the thing that I was doing on the side matched my salary. I kept doing it, but I did it in secret. And I found that, in reality, that sometimes people, their opinion will stop you from doing something that you want to do. But I decided to keep doing that thing despite what they had to say about what I should do. But I just did it in secret. And so my last role, I was working at Bank of Tokyo, like a Japanese bank. It was huge. I had an amazing manager, an amazing salary. And then I ended up quitting my job to pursue my world in um, YouTube. Now, I didn't expect that I could have done that. I didn't expect it to be a business, but eventually it became to be something that I could make a living from. And so I made the decision to leave. And when I left, I didn't tell anyone as to why I was leaving. They just thought, mm, she needs some time to herself. And that's why I told everyone. I just left and then began to continue to build my career. And as I was building my career on YouTube, it continued to grow. And I also realized that I didn't feel like I fitted on YouTube because there was lots of different communities that I wanted to be part of and I wasn't necessarily a part of. But what I found was that I had begun to build my own community. I'd begun to build my own following just by being me. And it took me seven years to get to one million followers, which is you know, absolutely fantastic and amazing. But I had a turning point where I decided I was gonna flip the script, do something a little bit different, and be more of myself. The days of trying to fit in had changed and I was over it. I decided to completely be myself. And in one year, I grew to one million followers. So seven years to, sorry, not one million, two million. So seven years to one million and another year to another million. I feel like it was a clear lesson in why being yourself might be, thank you guys, thank you. I feel like it was one of the clearest lessons to me why not fitting in might be the reason why you stand out. And not, being, not having a seat at the table is probably very similar to feeling like you don't necessarily fit in. However, that didn't make a difference to me. And eventually I built my own table via my social media platforms and everyone else is invited. Thanks for having me guys. That is it. Thank you, guys. <laughs>